جزاك الله خير شيخ على السيد we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from, to protect us from all evils and now again we start we go back to our first speaker who is uh, Sheikh Wail uh, he's the founder of uh, the Aware Academy Global and we mentioned that this platform is uh, dedicated to helping those who are struggling with uh, uh, a very visual addiction uh, uh, Sheikh uh, Wail will be speaking about the science of uh, pornography addiction فلتفضل uh, Sheikh Wail Allah accept from all of us and it was a pleasure listening to the previous mashayikh mashallah tabarakallah they covered a lot of uh, information around the harms of pornography on one's faith uh, I really enjoyed that talk a lot because uh, uh, whether you're a Muslim or not you care about your faith um, and, and, and once you ruin that part of your life, then everything else will follow. Everything else will crumble. So I enjoyed the, the talk a lot. Sheikh Ala, Jazakallah Khair, he did his uh, homework. MashaAllah, Tawarakallah. We spoke together many years ago in Malaysia when we met in a conference. And he was so passionate to bring me to Canada to do the workshops, the signature workshops of the Aware Academy and uh, to train people. So Alhamdulillah, very glad to see him coming. Uh, on board now with full force, Allahu Akbar. And he spoke about uh, some also uh, uh, points related to science, which we will highlight again, inshallah. Uh, two things just I wanted to, to not to comment, uh, just to add, inshallah, to what Sheikh Alat said, uh, previously said, the statistic that he mentioned, 56% of divorce cases, and that's in the United States, happen because one or both partners are addicted to pornography. This is a statistic that was in 2005. I want you to remember this. This is so outdated uh, a statistic that uh, I think, Yanni, God alone knows how many more divorce cases are happening today because of the same thing, because even pornography back in 2005 was completely different than 2020. Uh, it, it, actually, the story of porn uh, uh, production and and, uh, and, and, uh, and presentation had changed a lot from 2006 when YouTube started to arise and become popular. Then all these websites followed the same pattern of YouTube-like videos and bam, uh, with, uh, with fast, you know, fast internet connection, all that, addiction even became more uh, hard. So this one point. Um, the second is uh, with all, I love Sheikh Ala Sayyid, but one thing we kept on repeating, and uh, it's even repeated by so many people in the field, is that pornography is not reality. When we tell that to people who are addicted to pornography, what we say is, uh, you know what? This is uh, nothing. This is uh, something that never happened in reality. But the, the problem with this approach is that porn addicts themselves, on the long run, they act out their fantasy. So Sheikh Ala said mentioned that there are partners who have, uh, you know, practiced what I believe infidelity. They cheated on each other. Now, when they cheated on each other, what did they do? They actually imitated what they have seen or what they had seen in those scenes, in those films. So when we tell them that porn is not reality, they will actually consider either we don't know uh, much or uh perhaps perhaps we have no clue but because the the porn addicts they act out so they which means they they do exactly as what porn stars do uh just uh, the the problem that i would rather use or the the approach i would rather use is that uh, it set a lot of expectations that may, may we as as husbands and wives may fail in, in doing so when, when we approach our, uh, each other. So this is just two points to highlight the importance of approaching the topic from a health perspective rather than the comparison factor. Now, the science tells us a lot about pornography. And, and surprisingly, if we know that much, how could we not bring a stop uh, to this practice, to this uh, industry? Now, uh, uh, Dr. Patrick Carnes is one of the earliest scholars. Uh, he's a, a psychologist, a sex uh, therapist. He's among the earliest people who have actually spoken about sex addiction and porn addiction in 1980s. I want you to imagine this. And at that time, people were mocking him or making fun of him and so on. But he insisted to talk about uh, the harmful impact of uh, sexual addiction and other undesirable uh, behavior. 
And he said that addiction is a brain disease. So this is now we have to pose here for a while because if you went to a doctor and a physician and they scan your brain, they said that you have a tumor, we know where you're heading to. That's a disease that could lead almost uh, most of the time, well, I had the blame Allah protect us and save us all, but most of the time would lead to your demise. So when, when, when Patrick Carnes mentioned that, uh, that addiction in itself is a brain disease, he's actually telling us what Sheikh Ala was mentioning about brain alteration, that pornography had the power, has the power to actually change your brain physically, the structure of your brain that Allah had created you with will change uh, physically and as a result lead you to all these behaviors that you don't know why you can't quit, why you can't stop. That's why now it makes sense, right? Because your brain had changed. The structure, the chemical structure of your brain have changed. And as a result, you, now you're out of your, uh, uh, out of control. Uh, and he mentioned about uh, uh, dopamine. That's the driving force. The uh, As uh, Gary Wilson, the author of Your Brain on Porn, called it the go-get-it hormone. That's the hormone that pushes you every time, uh, uh, you know, every time you think or you, you visualize what you have seen or the flashbacks or things you saw on the internet or things you saw on the street, immediately that uh, chemical response or that hormone's response for, is to push you to repeat the activity again and again. And as a result, a pathway in your brain would be engraved and hardwired with this activity. And that's why people cannot quit pornography easily. They cannot quit it easily. The, the good news, because I wanted to mention today, inshallah, some, some good news as we progress, inshallah, is there any solution? Yes, uh, your brain can rewire itself and go back to its original state. And that's the beauty of the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One of the magnificent creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the human brain. So it has the ability, provided that you stay away and stare stare away from uh, pornography because the more you stare at, the more you store in your brain. Uh, that's why lowering the gaze was one of the brilliant advice given by the Prophet Sallallahu and it's mentioned in the Quran because what you see, what you stare at, you store in your brain and those flashbacks bring these hormones into uh, uh, activity or reactivity every now and then. So uh, Patrick Carnes mentioned that it is a brain disease. Uh, Michael, uh, Dr. Michael Kohar also mentioned that it is a brain disease. So you have to treat it as such. You have to treat it as a sickness. And that brings me now to the point of how can we deal with porn addicts? When a wife, Sheikh Allah said, mashallah, gave brilliant advice to husbands and wives, may Allah protect him. But when a wife discovered now that her husband is actually into this, uh, problem, don't think that he's cheating on you. Don't think that uh, he doesn't like you anymore. Don't think that you are the reason why he stepped out of his way and went into porn. No, he is diseased. He has a problem. He cannot control himself. And yes, you have full right. You have all rights to get angry, to get frustrated, to get a little bit worried, and sometimes, you know, to doubt his behaviors elsewhere and so on. And so forth. you have full right. And also the husband must bear with patience because you brought this into your life anyway. Yeah. So, but we have to deal with the addict with that eye of mercy and compassion. SubhanAllah, I will never forget the narration of the Prophet ﷺ when a man came to him asking him to commit zina. I, 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 would, I would look and I would compare that scenario with any imam in the world. Like, you know, if, imagine if somebody entered into the masjid and said to any imam, uh, imam, please allow me, give me permission, make, make zina halal. How will that imam or that scholar or that sheikh react? I cannot imagine uh, anyone would react in the sublime manner of the Prophet Sallallahu and how he reacted to that man by asking him questions. Will you allow this to happen to your mother, to your sister, to your daughter? To... Look, the Prophet Sallallahu walked him through, uh, you know, visualizing these same, this same sin, but for his beloved family members and the man said, no, no, no. And as a result, the man realized that he was asking for something awful. The Prophet Sallallahu in that scenario, in that story, never mentioned the word haram. Never, never, you know, scolded the man how dare he talk to the Prophet of Allah in that manner. Never told him, are you crazy? Are you, don't you know it's haram? Because 
he is apparently one of the companions, right? The, the definition of a companion is a man who lived with the Prophet, accepted Islam during his lifetime, and died as a Muslim. So he had seen the Prophet, interacted with him, so he's a companion, which means one of the best of all generations. Yet he had that issue, he had that problem, uh, attachment to uh, his desires toward uh, women, and not only women, but haram women, women who are unlawful to him. Yet the Prophet ﷺ reacted in a very, very calm manner to guide him through because he realized that the man needed a different approach, not spiritual approach, the haram and, uh, and, 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 and quoting hadith and ayah and so on. No, 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 because the man knew it's haram. Similarly, people who are on porn, they know it's haram. They know it's wrong. They do not want it. But because of the compulsion, because of that dopamine factor, the go and get it hormone in the brain, the people, uh, you know, cannot control their desires. I, I'm dealing with so many clients who are uh, having this issue. And uh, no matter how many advice you give them, they will take it. They will be motivated in the first few days. But after a few days or after a few weeks, they relapse again. And they would tell me, we don't know what happened. We were in control. I, I was just talking to a brother two days ago, and he said that he quitted uh, pornography for eight months. Imagine, eight months, and then he relapsed. And one of the things that I wanted to highlight quickly, inshallah ta'ala, that once you quit for that long, uh, whether a week, two, three months, four months, observe what you've been doing. Observe that lifestyle which resulted in your sobriety. And never let go of your life. Never compromise with that lifestyle. Because the moment you have that, uh, what I call the little bit trick, a little bit of a video here, a little bit of a TV series here, a little bit of a movie here, those triggers will come back and reactivate your brain and reactivate that pathway for your addiction. I was telling also my brothers that I used to smoke back in the days, may Allah forgive us all, up until today, up until today, from time to time, I would dream that I'm actually smoking. And that dream would be like a kind of a vision, like you can smell the cigarette, you can touch it, you can, you know, experience the whole lot of smoking. While I have, may Allah protect us. And I have consulted so many people and neuroscientists said that once you are an addicted, you will be always addicted, which means the pathway that you have created for that particular addiction will never go away. Our job as counselors and coaches and, and neuroscientists and so on is to deactivate that pathway is to weaken it by replacing those activities by healthier ones. And what will happen as a result of introducing to your life new activities, your brain will relearn those activities. And as a result, those chemicals and those hormones responses will be produced to reinforce the new healthier behavior. You see, that's, that's the science behind addiction, any addiction, whether pornography or otherwise. But the bad news, I'll, I'll always bring the bad news. Right? The bad news is that dopamine is produced during sexual uh, uh, enjoyment and pleasure and even uh, during orgasm in a massive quantity than any other natural uh, pleasure that we experience, food and uh, sports. And that's that's the, the, the difficult part, is the dopamine, when it is produced in seeking sexual pleasure, the amount of hormones that are produced in the reward circuit of the brain is massive. And as a result, it's very, very difficult for the person to cope with these uh, uh, desires. That's why we need support system. We need people around you. If you're a husband who's addicted, go and tell your wife and bear with patience her reaction and explain to her that it's not about her, it's not about this and that, it's just something in your brain and you need her support. And once you have someone in your life, then the chances for you to relapse becomes very minor. Uh, is pornography pleasurable? Yes, we can't, we can't deny that. I, I was talking to uh, people in the Philippines uh, and I told them, is really pork uh, tasty? They say, yeah, absolutely. They, it's delicious. You should try it. They say that. Anything mostly haram is pleasurable. That's why the Prophet uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made those items haram, not because he don't want us to be pleased, but he wanted, to, he wanted us to be pleased through other natural and uh, healthier means. That's all. 
So pork is 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 unhealthy. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, don't, don't, don't eat it. I know people say that even uh, dogs and cats are tasty in China. <laughs> That's what they say. So are we going to now go and hunt for dogs? And because, you know, we run after our desires. Sheikh uh, Kamel uh, mentioned about desires and, 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 uh, and shubuhat and doubts. And, uh, so subhanAllah, Allah wanted to control those desires so that we can, inshallah, enjoy through other healthier means. The problem now, once you experience this pleasure, this haram pleasure, billah, through uh, pornography, you develop, your brain develop tolerance. So in the beginning, you are guilty. You feel ashamed of yourself. You feel, you know, uh, unhappiness, sadness, and so on. But as you progress and as you repeat the activities again and again, and you start getting into that cycle, you develop tolerance, complete numbness to this guilt that usually lead to repentance. Sheikh uh, Yahya, I believe we'll talk about repentance later. So it's very, very dangerous. My brothers and sisters, be careful. I know many people who refuse to repent now. They refuse to repent from porn addiction or por pornography in general, porn consumption. Why? Because they have tried repentance and it didn't work. They gave up on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Can you see now how pornography could lead to, like what pornography could lead to, could lead to? To complete loss of faith. So once you develop tolerance, you lose control of your actions. That's the cycle of addiction, right? You lose control of your action. Now you go like a zombie into these websites without you even controlling those uh, uh, urges. You're out of control. It becomes something on autopilot. Uh, I know many students who will go to do their assignments, their tasks, and all of a sudden they will find themselves viewing these websites without even realizing. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. And then compulsion of use despite negative consequences. So people will, be, will get caught um, by their daughters. I, I know many clients who have been caught by their daughters. And w one of these daughters, well, ayadu billah, may Allah protect us, or became a prostitute because of this incident. Why? She became so curious about sexuality at a very, very early age. And as a result, she ended up being a prostitute. Look what you have done to your family. So pornography is not about the individual anymore. It can affect the entire society at large. It can contribute to rape culture, that's why in Nepal, uh, uh, they banned pornography completely. Why? Because they have observed in the past 10 years, pornography had increased, uh, sorry, rape had increased by 300%. 300%. Can you imagine? Pornography could lead to uh, twisting our understanding about the real life intimacy. Pornography can twist the understanding of minors, children, and as a result, they act out the fantasy on each other, as we mentioned earlier, child-on-child -child sexual abuse. Pornography could contribute to family domestic violence because pornography today, as I mentioned earlier, 88% of their scenes are aggression against women in, in general, pulling the hair, slapping. Uh, we get a lot of cases, you know, recently in Australia, broken necks, girls will be uh, rushed to hospital with broken necks because of the pulling of the hair during sexual intimacy between partners. Slapping is very normal, becomes very normal. I get a lot of clients and I believe many mashaykh will come like, is it normal, Sheikh, for my husband to beat me up while I'm in? You know, I was, I was uh, in a conference and I heard a sister said that a client of her, she's, she was a psychologist, a client, a husband carried his wife, handcuffed her, put her in the trunk of his car, drove her in an isolated area and raped her on the street and then brought her back crying because he was out of control. Because these are the types of porn that he used to watch. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us all. And then withdrawal. Once, you've, once you, you decided to quit, you realize now it's a big problem. Once you, you, you realize to quit, withdrawal symptoms are also associated with quitting pornography. And sometimes it's really irritating, mood swinging. Uh, Sheikh Ala mentioned depression, anxiety. All these things are associated with pornography. Who could have imagined that such imagery could lead to uh, such mental illnesses that all of us now are talking about. Mental illness, 
uh, mental illness organization had increased in the past two years in a massive way. Why? Because they have realized that it's not always about the physical health. It's also about our mental capacity, mental rationality, mental health. We have to also be fit uh, mentally and emotionally. It's a big, big, big deal now to talk about mental health and emotional intelligence and whatnot, right? Nobody is talking about the root cause of these things because one of the main root causes that lead to depression, anxiety, mood swinging, uh, brain fog, and all this is actually pornography. And the reason is very obvious. Why you get depressed as a result of watching pornography, which is supposed to be um, you know, a, a pleasurable path for you to relieve yourself, because as Sheikh Alat Said mentioned earlier, the comparison factor. Those actors and actresses that appear in, in porn movies, they are very uh, you know, carefully selected. They select different bodies that are not commonly, you know, walking down the streets every day and every, you don't see them every day and every night, but they're real. They're real people, bodybuilders and slim ladies and whatnot. And they made that the standard for sexual intimacy. So everyone watches this. Oh my God, how will I perform the same way? I don't have this kind of body. I don't have this kind of uh, organ. I don't have this. I don't have that. My wife is a little bit big. My wife is a little bit short. My wife is this. And my husband is not as handsome as this. And because the selection, the more you see, the more you store, and then you start fantasizing about uh, this in reality. And with the first slip, with the first slip, you act out your, what you have uh, seen. Um, uh, what else uh, pornography could lead to? Could lead to uh, uh, sexual uh, diseases. How? Because pornography or addiction in general escalates. If you are a smoker, you know what I'm talking about. You started with a cigarette and you thought perhaps this is just cool kind of, you know, practice. You will have it once every now and then and you end up having two or three packs a day. It's addiction escalates. The doses will, your brain will produce those chemicals, go and get it. And the doses will increase as you progress. And this happened, you know, and people die because of their addiction. Why? Because of overdose. They want more quantity. The amount of drugs in their bodies are not now enough to produce the same pleasure. So the dopamine would be produced in larger quantity requiring more doses and so on and so forth. And you never get the same pleasure of the first experience. Never, it's never gonna come back, never. It's done with. Drugs is like that. It, it takes you high, that's why you say, I'm high. Yeah? As a drug addict, you say they are high. It takes you very high, you feel very, very good. And then once the effect is gone, you go down. Then you need more to experience the same high, but we never go the same high. You go a little bit higher, but not as the first one. Then you drop again, and then you get again into your body more doses until you literally die. That's for drug addiction. For pornography, you require more imagery. You require more bizarre imagery. Sometimes people go on homosexual uh, uh, websites of that nature, although they don't look at themselves as gays and lesbians, for example. Or bestiality. People who go and watch these types of pornography you know, people with animals, but they themselves will never imagine themselves having sex with animals, may Allah protect us. But because they don't experience the same rush, they increase the doses. They increase the doses. As a result, quickly, inshallah, before we wrap up this uh, segment, inshallah, as a result, you develop what is known as numb pleasure response. You don't experience any pleasure anywhere with any other activity. You don't feel excited about anything in life but pornography. Pornography is the one that pr produced this. And this is what's called hyperreactivity to porn. Your, your, your brain is just waiting for this moment for your brain to explode with dopamine so that you can come into your comfort zone and experience those pleasures. But if you love soccer or football or uh, rugby or whatever sport you like, or even movies or anything else, any, a, a dish or a meal or this and that, you may enjoy it, but not as good as uh, pornography. Willpower, your willpower is completely destroyed. Why? Because pornography hack one of the most important area of the brain, the prefrontal cortex, which is responsible for your motivation, your memory, your decision making. There are people who are diagnosed with decision impairment because of pornography. 
they, they don't have the ability to choose between a variety of options because pornography hacked that part. Uh, I was in Indonesia, sister, uh, uh, her name is uh, uh, Eli Rizman. She replicated a study being done in Cambridge University some times ago, I think 2004, 2005, long time ago, these, these things are being uh, studied, uh, where they found that actually pornography had the same impact on the brain, just like cocaine and heroin. Same impact. It changes your brain in the same way. So Sister Ellie Rizman, may Allah bless her, back in the days, I think four or five years back, or three, four uh, years ago, uh, I was in Indonesia delivering this content, and uh, she discussed with me that she replicated the studies in Indonesia on 30 kids. 15 of them were addicted to pornography after a long process of screening to find those kids, and 15 were non-addicts. And she found the same thing, that this part, the frontal lobes or the prefrontal cortex, actually shrinks by 4.0% of its actual size as compared to those who are non-addicts, resulting to all the problems that I just mentioned earlier, lack of motivation, lack of focus, loss of memory, and a bunch of other problems that uh, you can't even imagine. Leading to what? Leading to what is known as brain conditioning. And that's what Sheikh Allah uh, quickly touched on, leading to erectile dysfunction. It's not actually erectile dysfunction because erectile dysfunction is a medical condition, which could be the result of diabetes and other, other sicknesses. But, but erectile dysfunction, because of pornography, it's called porn-induced erectile dysfunction. It is a, a scientific discovery. You know, in, in the past 20 years or so, they've been talking about it. Uh, a lack of sexual performance because of pornography, because pornography had conditioned your brain to seek pleasure through screens, computers, smartphones. So when you are with a real life partner, with your beloved wife, you function, you, 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 you fail to perform sexually. But uh, be careful, my sisters, the same condition apply to you, but not, it's not called um, erectile dysfunction, it's called anorgasmia. So uh, we found those sisters who are addicted to pornography or they suffer from what is known as anorgasmia or lack of experiencing climax during sexual uh, intimacy. Why? Again, because your brain had conditioned you to seek this through self-pleasuring uh, on, on these uh, uh, websites. I, I think I run out over time. May Allah uh, protect us all. But inshallah ta'ala, we'll come back to uh, talk about solutions inshallah so that we can give hope to people. Uh, our brain can change, but the process may take uh, a bit of uh, time. Uh, the rewarding process takes maybe eight to a year, eight months to one year to, uh, you know, get back to shape. Uh, it's, it's a painful, long process, but it's worth the attempt. You have already wasted years of your life into that cycle of addiction, and it's not getting, getting you anywhere. So it's better to uh, take that one year, two years of your life, and inshallah, for, for the rest of your life, that commitment never to go back to that cycle, inshallah, with the support system that you will put in place and other things that we will discuss later inshallah when we talk about the solutions inshallah you will get out of your misery jazakumullah khairan may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us all ameen assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah see you in a while inshallah